Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to read and analyze pixels with a script. Now the way this method is going to work is that we're going to be using three text layers, one to represent the R, G, and B channels, and then essentially we're going to use a point control which will click on a pixel or you can move it around to any pixel and update the RGB values for these text layers. This will give you a direct reading of what the RGB of a single pixel or a range of pixels can be based on the sample image function inside of expressions. So essentially what the script is going to do is take a single layer you have in your composition or pre-composition and it's going to generate three text layers, apply proper expressions to give you the RG and B values and then you can go off and do whatever you want with this. I previously used this in my color palette generator script, which essentially used the same method of creating several text layers, analyzing a wide range of pixels across the image, and then averaging out and finding out the most common colors to create a color palette. Now just off the top of my head, I can think of many other methods that this could be used for, such as um, detecting if a scene has been changed, if there's a large dramatic change in pixel values across different areas of the screen, that can be a definite indicator of a scene split. Um, which might be something I do in the future, as you can see by the name of this script, it's just an idea. There's also many other applications by analyzing pixels, and we can get away with quite a lot, even though we're not analyzing every single pixel in our image, we're essentially going to find efficient ways to analyze the majority of them, or you can even sample certain areas of your screen if there's certain things you're looking for. Maybe you could make a watermark detector if you search in this area of the screen here, or some kind of a lower thirds detector that will look in the lower left area of the screen to see if there's a lower third. So that's just a brief introduction to a few of the uses of this um, method we're going to be taking a look at today. Let's go ahead and get into scripting. it. So again, what we're basically going to be doing is making a point control on our actual layer we're going to be analyzing, and then a text layer for the R, G, and B values which are then going to use an expression to sample the image in a given location based on the point control and then it's going to update the text of that text layer based on the sampled image expression. So let's go ahead and create a function called analyze RGB and for this we're just going to require a layer. Usually I would include a composition but we can infer the composition based on just the layer. So if we type in var comp is equal to our layer dot containing comp that's gonna give us the comp that it's within. So if we gave it this uh, layer here, if we just said app.project.activeitem.layer1, and then the containing comp of that will give us this main comp it's in. So now we're gonna to wanna to create the point control. So I'll create a variable called point control and set this equal to our layer.effects. And we're gonna add an Adobe point control. And then just so we have a variable for the actual point right here that we can move around, let's create a variable called point. And we'll set this equal to our point control and the first property, which is called point. And if you're ever wondering if you're not getting the right variables or something, you can always do a right line or an alert. So we can maybe say uh, right line the comp name and then get the point value. And to run this, we need to call the function analyze RGB and give it a layer. And the layer we're going to give it is app.project.activeitem.layer1. And again, this assumes that they have the first layer as the one they want. And if you have multiple, you could always pre-compose them as well. So if we run this, we're going to get an error saying we cannot add this to our layer. And of course, we cannot just use add, we need to add a property. And then let's go ahead and delete our original point control and run this. So now you can see, we're going to successfully run it. We're gonna get the comp name written in our JavaScript console, which is the auto edit padding, and then the alert for the point value, which is currently set to the center 960 by 540. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and create our text layers, one for the red channel, green channel, and blue channel. So I'll just create a couple of variables, one called red text, um, and set this equal to our comp.layers, and we're going to add text. It's going to be empty text, so we don't have to put in any arguments. And then I'll just duplicate it a couple times, so green text, and also make a blue text. Then I'm going to actually make another variable for the source text of each of these layers. Uh, the source text right here is what's going to contain both the expression and um, as well as just give us easier access to changing the values. So I'm going to create another variable called red source text and set this equal to our red text property called 
source text. And then I'll do the same thing and copy and paste this for the green and blue as well. And then lastly, we need to apply the expressions to each of these. Um, each one's going to be slightly different, but we're going to go ahead and say red source text. We're going to take the actual source text property here, and we're going to say dot expression and set the expression to a string in single quotes. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the expression from the last tutorial. And basically what it is, is very simple. We're going to create a variable called the target layer, which is equivalent to the layer we've selected. And you can see we're bringing in a layer.name. What this means is whatever layer we give it, in this case, this footage here, it's going to refer to our target layer in our expression using this um, JavaScript extended variable, which we've added in here. Then we're going to generate a sample point, basically where we're going to sample things. And this is going to be based on our point control. So we're going to refer to this target footage layer, the effect called point control, and the value for point. So whatever this uh, point value is set to, that's what our sample point variable in our expression is going to be set to. Then for the sample radius, we're just going to uh, sample one by one. If you want to sample a wider range of pixels for sort of an averaged analysis of what the image is, then you can increase this number. But generally, I just want to check the individual pixels. So then we have sampled color, which I've changed the name of from sampled color underscore 8 bits per channel. Um, basically, what this is, is we're going to take our target footage layer and we're going to use the built in expression called sample image. If you uh, go ahead and apply an expression to anything and check inside of all of this. Under layer in general, you can see we have this sample image expression function, which just makes us put in a point, a radius, and a post effect and a time. So what we are going to give it is our target layer dot sample image, we're going to give it our sample point, which again, our sample point refers to our point control right here. So wherever the point control is um, pointing to, that's what the target layer sample image is going to take in as the point. And then the radius of our sample is going to be our one by one array here. We're not going to give it the post effect or a specific time, but you could do that as well. Um, for example, if you wanted to make a scene splitter or analyze pixels over time, you may want to use the time uh, argument as well. And then lastly, we're just going to set a variable called R e equal to that value, which I need to update here. And we're going to grab the first index because it's going to give us an R, G, and a B. But this is just the R layer. So we want the zero width or first index of that array of values. Um, so basically, if we sample this pixel right here that I'm hovering over, we get a value of 237, 184, and 78. That's going to be what it gives us for our uh, sampled color variable here. But we just want to get the very first value, which is R. That's why we're setting this variable R or uh, red equal to our sampled color the first value and of course we're rounding it because we may get a bunch of decimals as well and then finally we're just going to um, say output string is equal to r and that's just going to output the text that has been calculated by all of this so if i go ahead and just uh, take this expression and we're going to copy and paste it here in the source text we're going to get a small error because um, we don't have a javascript script here so we're going to change our layer dot name to the actual layer. Um, so what I'll do is just type it in. And now you can see we have a number appearing. We don't have any actual name for the text or anything. It's still empty, but it's going to display this number for us. And if I go ahead and move around my point control, you can see it's also going to update our number. So remember, we're getting just the R value here by calling the first value of the index. Um, what I could maybe try and do is just set R equal to our sampled color and see what it returns. So we're actually going to get a long number with all the decimals of all of our R, G, and B values. I'm going to go ahead and scale it down so we can try and read it here. So we're getting for R 138 pixels for B, 80 pixels, etc. So we are getting all the values, but we really only want the R in this case. So now that we've done that for the red text and we know it works, let's go ahead and do it for the green and blue. So I'm going to copy and paste this for these layers, and we need to change the name. And then 
The only other thing we really need to do just for uh, reading purposes is, for example, this is the green text channel. We don't want the red, we want the green, so change to G. And then for the sample color, this needs to be the second value. And for B, it needs to be the third value. And we'll change R to B here as well. And one more thing I'm going to do before I run this is create an app.begin undo group around our uh, analyze RGB function. That way we can easily undo all of our text layer creation and all that just with one click. So I'll say app.begin undo group and app.end undo group. And let's go ahead and select our layer and run it. So now we're going to get our three text layers created here. Let's go ahead and bring them out here and see what's going on. It looks like two of them are missing their expressions. So let's see where we went wrong here. It looks like for our green source text and our blue source text, we forgot to update these variables as well. So we'll update that and run it again. And now we have three text layers being generated. The bottom one is going to be our R text layer, the middle one our G, and the top one our blue. So you can see for each pixel, it's going to give us the analysis of what the values are. So now our point control is working just fine. If we move it to say a dark area, we're gonna get some low RGB values. And if I move it over to a brighter area like this white text, you can see we're gonna get nearly all bright white 255 pixels. So then you can go off and look at different parts of the image with the script by changing the value of this point control and getting all the values that you need in order to analyze your image. So that's looking really good. The only other thing I could think that maybe would be interesting to mess around with is the sample radius. Um, we can put in maybe five by five pixels instead. And let's go ahead and undo all this. And then run it again. And let's see how different our values are gonna be. And in fact, this does feel a little bit slower a little bit laggier to do the five by five radius instead of just the individual pixels. Um, I'm noticing as I move it, there's a slight bit of lag. Um, and then as I release the mouse to drop off the point control, there's also a bit of lag and I can see it kind of going into adaptive frame rate or adaptive resolution here. So it's a little bit slower the more radius you use, but um, if you want to basically analyze a larger area of pixels at once and maybe do it in splotches across the screen, you can increase the sample radius. And again, this can be gone off on and applied to many other things like trying to generate a scene splitter to try and find when a scene cuts very abruptly. Uh, you can use it again like we've previously used to generate a color palette automatically based on any given image. And the biggest thing is just basically compiling all of those pixel data of the R, G, and B values. And there's lots of different things you can do just based on R, G, and B values. So you can do this throughout a certain amount of time or do it for a single image in a single frame and then do many different processes based off of that. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe down below to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. If you wanna check out our GitHub and follow us as well as our Instagram, you can do that down below in the description. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.